Hello everybody. So today we're going to talk about time. It's about time we do so. So, well, first of all, the quilly of the day, um, soft blanket, 100% synthetic polyester. This is one of the most uh, soft and really comfy blankets that I have. Um, I actually almost think of it as kind of a an act of self care to interact with this with this blanket. It's so so nice and 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 uh, cozy, and uh, I even actually use it for meditation. You know, if I'm wearing a t-shirt or something, I just like put in, put this on, and it's warming, and it makes me feel that I actually care about my own well being, which uh, it's uh, something nice. I mean, I think in our culture we don't. Huh. <laughs> We think that we're being selfish when we take care of ourselves and are kind to ourselves, but quite on the contrary, um, it actually does the opposite. It makes you more kind towards others as well. So anyway, hooray for very soft things. Uh, I also wanted to mention that the static and dynamic friction of this particular blanket are, is pretty much equivalent, meaning that you don't get stuck when you're when you're caressing this blanket. Okay, so we're talking about time. Um, now, Albert Einstein talks about physical time. Uh, he basically says that time is whatever a clock is measuring, <laughs> which is a very straightforward way of defining time. Now, the time that I'm interested in is phenomenal time, basically the experience of time. And likewise, you know, Einstein was talking about how the fact that the speed of light is constant and the fact that the principle of relativity combined with gravity, you know, when those you take those things combined, um, you end up with special relativity, you end up with general relativity, which shows you that actually your common sense view of time was a basically a special case of something far more general that in, you know, his case involved the curvature of space and how that's influenced with... Uh, with um, with gravity. Now, phenomenal time, the experience of time, also is something that we take for granted as pretty linear. Now, I have an article and also a presentation, and link in the comments, about how this is just not the case, that actually there is a wide diversity of what I call exotic phenomenal times. I think the most common exotic phenomenal time that people get acquainted with, oftentimes completely accidentally, is time loops. If you're on a psychedelic like LSD and you're listening to relatively repetitive music, you may feel that you're experiencing the same thing over and over eternally. You're stuck in a strange loop and the strange thing is that you understand the entirety of the loop at once and you know there's no escape. In fact, your very attempts to escape that loop are part of the loop themselves, which makes it just that much dreadful. <laughs> now, I don't think that time loops themselves inherently are negative. It's just that people tend to panic whenever they experience them. But, you know, they are a real thing. They're a real state of consciousness. And there's nothing to be afraid of if you can come to terms with the fact that, in some sense, the interface between physical time and phenomenal time is like a little bit more tricky than we originally thought. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're not in any actual danger simply because you're in, a, you know, stuck in a time loop. It's just weird and <laughs> new and different, as as a friend of mine would put it. Um, no reason to be afraid of them. Now, uh, time loops um, are just also a special case. Again, a very, very broad phenomena. Uh, other very strange phenomenal time experiences are, for example, moments of eternity. This happens on meditation, psychedelics, especially, you know, powerful stuff like 5-MeO DMT, but, you know, also like Janus and fruitions. And there's a lot of meditation states that basically it feels that you go outside time, people describe it as, or that just time is not passing, that there's just space. Now, how does this make any sense whatsoever? Well, I'll explain it to you in a second. Before that, though, I'll just give you a couple other weird, exotic, phenomenal time experiences. Another one is time branching. Some people on psychedelics or if they are experiencing psychosis of some sort, they will, let's say, be at a friend's place and they see their friend, you know, stand up from the couch. And all of a sudden, the friend kind of like splits into two 
and one of the copies goes to the kitchen and one of the copies goes to the bathroom and it feels like basically you're kind of looking at the multiverse you know the quantum multiverse you're seeing all the possible you know branches of it in superposition now my interpretation of this is that this is a a property of your conscious experience rather than you know actually directly experiencing the world i've talked about direct realism in the past and why i don't think it's true you basically experience a world simulation and one of the parameters of that world simulation is phenomenal time and in this particular case i think that something that is happening is that you're making predictions about what is going to happen next and then because of the psychedelic tracers that you experience um, those predictions don't get removed you know the garbage collector of your consciousness is broken so they accumulate and in that sense you're going to experience simultaneously your failed predictions which are also not being removed together with the actual new sensory input and that gives the impression of you know experiencing multiple timelines at once now this is extremely startling and also generally psychologically very upsetting because you feel that you kind of broke your universe or you broke the interface between your consciousness and the quantum multiverse or something weird like that in reality i think you broke your phenomenal time or the way your phenomenal time is constructed there's even weirder things um for those of you who haven't seen the movie tenet <laughs> i've been recommending it uh directed by christopher nolan really interesting movie i'm not an action guy i don't particularly enjoy fights and uh, a lot of like shooting and explosions but I am very much of a concept type of person and Tenet had a strong grip on me when it came to um, experiencing novel and interesting concepts. And uh, one of the things uh, related to that movie is a uh, time reversal and uh, not to spoil anything, but you know, just the concept that you may experience time moving backwards. Um, and there's a particular feeling associated with that also can happen in psychedelics uh, and it's extraordinarily weird. I mean, you get the feeling that, you know, you drop the cup and all of a sudden the cup re kind of like reassembles and gets back. And, you know, while it was reassembling, phenomenal time was moving backwards in your world simulation. You know, when those sort of things happen, I don't interpret it as, oh, you reversed your, you know, you moved back in, in, in time or you did something to the multiverse. It's like, no, you were predicting that, you know, the cup was going to break you know to fall down and break you simulated all of that in your experience and uh, when that didn't happen your brain did a interesting kind of a operation to turn it back and you experience that process and that process is an exotic phenomenal time okay so what on earth how is this happening well recall that on psychedelics you move your hand around and a lot of you see kind of these like stacked versions of your hand um the tracer tool uh, that we uh, have at, at the Qualia Research Institute. I recommend playing with it, trying to log your psychedelic experiences with it. Well, it's pointing at something very general, which is kind of this stacking or accumulation of sensations over time. Now, even when you're sober, that is also going on. However, we are finely tuned in such a way that the particular tracers that we experience are actually evolutionarily adaptive. They're good for the information processing that, you know, was adaptive in the ancestral environment. Um, whereas like psychedelic tracers, they're not particularly advantageous in the current environment. Um, now you can craft experiments where, you know, experiencing these tracers actually allow you to solve, you know, puzzles in a, in a more efficient way, um, enhance your performance in that sense, but it's only restricted to specific types of tasks, you know, for filing taxes or whatnot, experiencing lots of generalized tracers, you know, visual, auditory, <laughs> thought tracers, memory tracers, completely distracting, just not particularly useful. But, you know, think about what that tells you in a sense. You know, when somebody says that they experience an expansive sense of time on psychedelics, think of it from the point of view of tracers, that you're kind of accumulating all of these sensations. Yes, in a sense, you're experiencing a deeper arrow of time. There is this arrow of time that is encoded with how each sensation is stitched together to other sensations along a kind of entropy direction. You know, and when the cup is reassembling and going back into the table, the entropy is being reversed. Uh, now, you can formally define entropy in this interesting mathematical way that has to do with conditional statistical independence in uh, networks of correlations. Uh, that's how you can identify causality in statistics, uh, the work of uh, Judy Apparel and so on. 
And uh, if you apply that to the network of sensations, that's what I think is actually the sensation of time. And if that is what the feeling of time is, what phenomenal time is, that explains why you can experience all of these weird, exotic, phenomenal time experiences. So let's go through them really quickly. You have time loops. Well, if you have kind of this network of sensations and, you know, the entropy is moving in this direction, well, you can do this weird trick where the network over a series of operations wraps around itself and you get this loop. Now, it's a statistical loop because, you know, we're talking about a very large network of a lot of little micro sensations and their causal relationships between them. But as a whole, you could have this effect where the, um, it's kind of these like infinite stairs, uh, staircase where like basically uh, things are in a certain side of the network basically getting simpler and more uh, less entropic uh, in a particular direction such that that makes a loop. And that's a perfectly consistent state. Now, the experience of it will feel like you're trapped in this exotic, you know, weird time loop. Okay, what about like moments of eternity? Um, the most likely uh, scenario here is that actually a lot of the sensations are pointing to a central point. And that central point is reflecting back to all of the other sensations. And basically that effectively eliminates uh, an arrow of time because everything is just happening at once. Basically, all of the network, the, the, the entropy graded across the entire network basically is pointing towards a central region that points back. And that eliminates, in a sense, a direction, uh, a global direction in the arrow of time. Um, now, what about like time reversal? Well, that is also kind of tricky, but it, it, it's really just kind of reversing the arrow of conditional statistical independence in the network. And that um, you can keep the content relatively the same while reversing that arrow and it just feels that everything is moving back in time. I mean, basically you get these reverse tracers um, where like when you move your hand around, rather than, you know, the hand being followed by its tracers, you're basically, the hand is catching up to its tracers. And, you know, that's a perfectly valid state of consciousness. It's just exotic and strange. And it requires like, you know, some like delay effects and uh, information processing tricks, but you know, it's a valid state. And finally, um, time branching, you know, when you stand up and, and you see your friend bifurcate into these two realities. Well, that we interpret it as basically a modularization of the network, uh, as where along one part of the network, everything is connected, but then there is a, a threshold place where basically the network modularizes and it becomes these uh, orthogonal networks that don't interact anymore. So it's kind of a a Y shape of a network um, such that, you know, they share this timeline, they share this entropy gradient, but it divides at some point. And, you know, over here is your friend moving in one direction, over here is your friend moving in another direction. But I've got to emphasize that when you're experiencing this exotic phenomenal time, you're experiencing the entire Y network at once. The same as like when you're listening to music, you know, if it wasn't the case that you could experience, in a sense, the phenomenal future and the phenomenal past simultaneously with the phenomenal present, music wouldn't make any sense, right? Like you would just be listening to the current pressure <laughs> value <laughs> in your eardrum, which is of course not, not what's happening. You know, you're integrating information over time, all of these like sequences of, uh, you know, pressure alterations in your eardrum, and you're synthesizing that into a unified experience that is representing simultaneously information about the physical past and about the physical future, uh, predicted physical future, and all of that is part of your unified, physically present pseudo time arrow, which contains information about the physical future, the physical past, but is all happening at once. And that's the strange things about this. Basically, if this is true, um, you can do all sorts of crazy things, such as, you know, altering your 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 brain in such a way that you actually feel that like absolutely not nothing happens along, let's say, like ten a ten minute span. You can think of uh, the moments of eternity of uh, of Janus. People go into Janus; they have no idea how long they've been there. Sometimes it's for days, and they just have no way of telling, no way of knowing, you know, how how long it's been. 
Um, or likewise, you know, something as crazy as a come up of DMT, where, yeah, basically each couple seconds feels like epochs, you know, entire epochs of experience happened. Why? Because you have these extremely long pseudo time arrows, that is to say, these networks of sensations are extremely long, so that the depth of experience is very, very thick along the subjective arrow of time. Anyway, not to make this too long, uh, I've been uh, I'm trying to <laughs> make the videos be less than 20 minutes. So anyway, it's about time I talk about time and this is it. And now it's the end of this talk. So have a good time.